think this is the last one. Is it? Is it really the last one? I thought you had so much more. <laughs> no. 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 These are, we are, we're down to our final two predictions. All right. Two predictions. All right. Three predictions. Now, real our quick for those three. for first time listeners, what is this segment about? Oh, a little while ago, I went to a comic book convention and I bought a magazine called Sports Review Wrestling from 1988. And I bought it because on the cover, it said predictions through 1998. And I thought 1998 from 1988 to 1998 was a real juicy year set of years for professional wrestling. Surely some they had to get something right. And thus far, they have been both uh creepily accurate and insanely wrong uh we have had um uh accurate predictions uh so far as to kind of predict the rise of wcw and then we've had terrifyingly wrong predictions such as wrestlemania 14's main event taking place in the international space station (laughs) last week we learned about how hulk hogan was going to join the four horsemen that's a lot of fun (laughs) And this week, we're going to learn about Chris Von Eric. Chris Von Eric, for years hindered by his size, will finally experience a long awaited growth spurt in 1993. In 1995, <laughs> he will have developed into a six foot four, 280 pound muscle man with strength and abilities far beyond his brother. Kerry Von Eric. With Kerry as his manager, Chris will win the world class heavyweight title in early 1996, and the crowd at the 1997 Parade of Champions will top the 50,000 mark as Chris Mania overtakes Texas. Is that the greatest hmm. sports almanac? That's exactly right. And not not even slightly accurate, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no, not this time. <laughs> uh, next up, bored with her duties as Randy Savage's manager, Elizabeth will, in 1994, announce her intention to become an active wrestler. With Randy Savage as her trainer, Elizabeth will mold herself into a top-flight grappler and, without having had one official match, brashly challenge Wendy, Wendy Richter for the WWF world women's title in march 1995 in a thrilling 36 minute encounter elizabeth will pin richter with a sunset flip celebrating the victory she'll carry the macho man on her shoulders wow (laughs) inaccurate but jesus i wish we could have seen that i want to know how they got 36 minute match that's really really accurate that's really accurate specific (laughs) <laughs> did, did, did the Hulk Hogan even ever do a 36 minute match? That's not. No, that that went away. That went away in the Hulk 80s. The only time Hogan's done a 36 minute match is if he was in a Royal Rumble. Maybe. <laughs> no, not even close. No, he was always in the top 20. No way. Finally, in what will be remembered as the shocker of the decade. Nick God. Bockwinkle will come out of retirement to win the AWA world title for the fifth time in August 1996. The wily veteran will defeat Nick Kinski for the belt in front of 34,000 fans at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis. Kinski had attacked Bockwinkle during a TV interview on ESPN months earlier, hospitalizing Bockwinkle with back and neck injuries. Bockwinkle will attract national attention for his training efforts upon his release from the hospital and will thrill fans around the globe when he takes the belt from Kinski at a 32 minute 11 30, yeah 32 minute 11 second mark of an action packed match. Bockwinkle will go back into retirement to stay following his victory. I feel like this is the point where the guy writing the article was like oh, I got 200 words to go. All right, you know what? I will I will give them a modicum of credit for this one. They just had the guy wrong. Bob Backlund came mm-hmm. back and won the WWF title in 95. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, because I think Backlund has the longest, the record for the longest stretch between world title wins. So, they were right about someone coming back. They just weren't right about who it was. True. And a different company. Just, just to to give everyone some perspective as to what what all was happening in 1996. You know, during this, Nick Kinski, Nick Bockwinkel, uh, 
uh, blowout, The Rock debuted as Flex Kavana in uh, in 1996. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jim the Anvil Neidhart showed up in 1996. Uh, his apparently his gimmick was uh, the Who. Oh God! No, no, not the Who. Just Who, just, right? Just Who. Just Who. Ray Rougeau fought Owen Hart in a boxing match, uh, and um, Bret Hart wrestled wrestled internationally during his hiatus. So this would have been the background noise to the uh, the Nick Bach, Nick Bockwinkle celebration. Wait, these are things that really happened? Those things actually happened. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Bret Hart in and Africa. thus concludes. Mark Henry was the next big thing. Yeah. Thus concludes predictions from 1988.